If you have watched some of our other videos, you now know more about how the brain works. You know that all pain is real, and that all pain is actually created by the brain. And you know that stress and emotions can cause the brain to generate pain even when there is no physical damage in the body. But how do you know if you might have a mind-body disorder? These ideas are very different from what most people think about pain, and even what most doctors think about pain. So how can you tell if your pain is due to an injury or a structural problem in the body, or if you are in fact suffering from neural circuit pain? Good question. Important question. Here is some guidance on how to figure this out. If you have a pain, like a back or neck ache, or a stomach ache or headache, you want to make sure that this is not caused by a structural problem, such as a fracture, a tumor, an infection, or some other major disease. So it's always necessary to see your doctor to get checked out. In general, if there is no evidence for a tumor, a fracture, an infection, or some significant structural problem, it is likely that the pain is not due to a structural problem. We learned in one of the other videos that an abnormal MRI of the neck or back is often actually normal in most people. In fact, these mildly abnormal MRIs occur in most people who have no back pain at all. So if there is no clearly identifiable structural problem, this is good news. Now you know what you don't have. Getting medical treatment for a physical condition, like an operation, when the pain is actually caused by the brain, is not a good idea. We all know of people who have had operations for back pain, only to have more pain after the operation than they had before. But what do you have? Now we can go even further. You can determine if you do have a neural circuit pain problem. How in the world do I do that, you might ask? Good question. It's not often as difficult as you might think. Let's compare these situations. Sarah has a broken arm. It is tender to touch all the time. It is swollen. The pain is always in the same location. It is also constant due to the acute injury. And it is always worse when she moves it. This is structural pain. Frederico has neural circuit pain in his neck. Some days he wakes up with pain, but other days he doesn't have any pain at all. Why? Because the subconscious brain can turn pain on or off, and in his case, there is not a structural problem. Susie has neural circuit pain in her lower back. She has no pain in the morning, then it gets worse in the afternoon, only to go away again in the evening. She sometimes wakes up with it in the middle of the night. Her brain is turning pain on and off at different times. James has neural circuit pain in his leg. He had it every day for six months. Then he went on vacation, and it was much less for two weeks. On the plane home, his leg started hurting really bad. His brain felt less stress on vacation and turned down the pain. But when facing a return to his stressful job, his brain cranked up the pain. Rosie has neural circuit pain in her bottom. She has no pain while lying down. But when she sits for work, she gets more and more pain the longer she sits. However, she can ride a bicycle without pain and can sit in a movie with little pain. Her pain is inconsistent. Therefore, neural circuit pain. Elizabeth has face pain that gets much worse when the wind blows on it, or she hears loud sounds. These are triggering the brain to turn on the pain. Zach has pain in both of his arms one morning, but by the afternoon, the pain has moved to his legs, and later to his neck. His brain is turning on some neural circuits for pain, and turning off others. Alice gets headaches when the weather changes, or when she eats certain foods. These are triggering the brain to generate pain. Alex gets stomach pain just before having to give a presentation at work or when he has to attend a family gathering. His brain is afraid of these events and creates pain as a warning sign. Maria had pain every day between her shoulder blades for two months. 
It began when her husband had surgery, and she feared he would die. Gradually it got better, and often it was not there. But as soon as she thought about the pain, it would reappear. This is her brain. Once a doctor has helped you to be sure that there is no serious structural problem, there are many clues you can use to confirm that you have a neural circuit disorder. There are certain disorders that are almost always neural circuit disorders, such as tension and migraine headaches, irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, and insomnia. There are many other disorders that are usually, but not always, caused by neural circuits, such as pelvic pain syndromes, chronic neck and back pain, chronic stomach pains, and heartburn, chronic facial or dental pain, chronic regional pain syndrome, dizziness, tinnitus, and painful bladder syndrome. Clues that a good detective doctor can use to confirm a neural circuit disorder are pains or symptoms that turn on and off, are inconsistently present, occur in a large area of the body, are triggered by stress or innocuous stimuli, shift in location, vary in intensity or quality. Therefore, everyone should know that some pains are due to structural problems, and other pains are due to neural circuits in the brain. Chronic pain is often caused by neural circuits when there is no damage in the body. This is more common than you might think. A good team consisting of you and your doctor can be good detectives and figure this out. Your health and well-being depend on making an accurate diagnosis. The treatment for a structural disorder is medical treatment, but the treatment for a neural circuit disorder is different. The treatment for it is to reprogram your brain to unlearn the pain.